Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought we'd talk about another turn-based roguelike that recently caught my eye. Today I thought we'd take a quick look at Stone Shard by Inkstains Games. So, what is Stone Shard? Well, at a glance, it's a turn-based roguelike RPG that draws inspiration from titles like Banner Saga, Darkest Dungeon, Diablo, and even Ancient Domains of Mystery. It's essentially a turn-based tactical dungeon crawler with some interesting twists, all set against a grim, war-torn fantasy backdrop. Stone Shard takes place in Aldor, a once powerful and prosperous kingdom that was torn apart 50 years prior to the events of the game. Cruel and ambitious, the last king led an ill-fated invasion against the elven jade kingdoms, resorting to foul necromancy to bolster the ranks of his crumbling armies. This was later known as the War of the Fallen, which only came to an end after the last king mysteriously disappeared. As the elven armies withdrew, disparate factions rose up and feuded for control of Aldor. The Discord began, a civil war that raged on for ten long years before a group of wealthy merchants assembled a mercenary army and claimed the nation for themselves. In the wake of their victory, Aldor was divided into a number of allied city-states known as the Grand Magistrate, and peace was restored, at least for a time. Now, however, decades later, the Grand Magistrate's power has waned and their alliances have grown strained. They find themselves struggling for influence against the elven merchants of the Azure Thread and the brigands of Dugo's Grey Army. All the while, orcs and goblins have begun gathering along Aldor's borders, and the last king has returned to reclaim his throne. Amidst all of this chaos, the player takes on the role of a mercenary in the employ of a man named Varen. Having recently come into possession of an artifact known as the Stone Shard, Varen hopes to put the relic to good use, but it's ultimately up to the player to help him determine the fate of the entire kingdom. From a gameplay standpoint, Stone Shard is presented as a fairly conventional roguelike dungeon crawler with an overarching story-based campaign. Many of the game's core mechanics are rather familiar, maps are procedurally generated, and the turn-based tactical combat takes place on a conventional square-based grid. However, Stone Shard will also possess several additional mechanics that will help set it apart from other similar titles. For example, the game heavily stresses the importance of planning ahead. The player will be perpetually outnumbered, so they'll have to be resourceful if they want to survive, using everything at their disposal to outthink and outmaneuver their opponents. Enemies can be lured into traps or choke points, torches can be doused to make it easier to sneak through the shadows, and a wide variety of spells and special abilities will allow the player to customize their strategies to fit their preferred playstyle. But it's not just the mundane threat posed by monsters and traps that the player will have to worry about. Stone Shard will also feature a health and survival system, which will constantly confront the player with other hazards, such as thirst, hunger, and even disease. Nasty injuries will do more than just strip the player's health, often saddling them with grievous and potentially crippling side effects, such as bleeding, broken bones, and other potentially deadly handicaps. As the player's morale and sanity begin to wane, they may also find themselves dealing with potentially debilitating mental conditions. Low morale might lead to depression, while low sanity may instead lead to irrational fear or violent bouts of madness. Over time, a hero can even develop special traits, habits, or phobias based on what they experience, which will have a direct impact on not only their attributes, but also the way they interact when dealing with certain NPCs or special events. A large part of the game will revolve around learning how to deal with these conditions. Some of it is fairly straightforward drinking or eating to deal with thirst and hunger, using bandages to staunch bleeding and splints to set broken bones, but it can quickly grow more complex than that. Many medical items will help the player deal with one problem while potentially hurting them in some other way. For example, a splint will help set a broken arm, but it won't get rid of the pain. A neither pipe will numb the pain, but will also toxify the blood. An antidote can help deal with those toxins, but the harsh chemicals will dull the player's mind, and so on. If the player isn't careful, they may solve one problem only to find that they've saddled themselves with something even worse. The game will require the player to perpetually juggle both conventional hazards as well as an array of both mental and physical conditions, and ignoring any one of these threats for too long may cause the situation to spiral out of control. 
This is a roguelike, after all, and the player will only get so far with luck and proper planning. Eventually, they'll make some critical misstep and their character's career will come to a sudden and violent end. Fortunately, in Stone Shard, death doesn't mean the end of the player's campaign. When the inevitable occurs and the player's mercenary is slain, Varen will simply go out and hire a new one. The player will build their new mercenary from the ground up, taking over where the last one left off, albeit with a bit less gold and experience to their name. This means that the average campaign is likely to end up following the careers of numerous unfortunate and ultimately expendable mercenaries, until one finally survives long enough to accomplish Varen's goals. This is where Stone Shard's surprisingly robust character creation system comes in. The player's choice of race and archetype will determine their starting class, with a total of 12 possible combinations planned for the core game. While this class will determine the character's starting skills and equipment, there are no class-based restrictions on how they develop afterwards, so it's entirely up to the player to decide if they want to follow a conventional or unconventional build. With 5 primary attributes, 12 primary weapons, and roughly 30 skills to choose from, the player is actively encouraged to experiment with a wide variety of combinations. They can be a heavily armored knight who dabbles in the black arts, a polearm-wielding wizard who skulks through the shadows, or even a dwarven berserker who magically summons an army of minions before charging into the thick of battle. It's entirely up to the player to decide how they want to tackle the numerous challenges that Aldor has to offer. But it's not just skills and equipment that will help set the player's characters apart. The game will offer a number of basic customization options, and while some of it, such as name, gender, and hairstyle, are purely visual, some of the other choices will actually have a tangible impact on how their characters develop over time. The player will have to answer a number of questions about their character's background, motivation, and personality, with the answers directly influencing their starting traits. A character with a religious background might receive special bonuses for pious behavior, a character motivated by greed will receive extra gold when completing quests, and so on. Even the player's choice of what god to follow will have a direct impact on how they play, because Aldor's pantheon tends to take an active role in the day-to-day -day affairs of the mortals who worship them. Although the player's character will likely change on a semi-regular basis, the rest of the world will remain persistent. The player's actions will help shape the world around them, and the overall campaign structure is somewhat reminiscent of the system used in games like Battle Brothers or Sunless Sea. The player's decisions will often come back to haunt their later characters, and killing important NPCs or destroying entire factions will leave a permanent mark on the player's current campaign. Between quests and dungeons, the player will often spend time with Varen's caravan. This essentially acts as a mobile base of operations, giving the player a place to rest and recuperate, and potentially providing the player's future characters with a head start when they're forced to take over for one of their unfortunate predecessors. At the beginning of the campaign, the caravan will be very limited, consisting of a single wagon that's just large enough to carry Varen and the player's character. However, over time, the player will be able to use gold and other resources to purchase additional wagons, which the player can then use to construct new facilities. These special upgrades can offer various bonuses, such as extra storage space, a place to worship the deity of their choice, or even a fully stocked kitchen to help stretch out the caravan's food supply. The player can also use that space to build additional living quarters, which will allow them to recruit extra camp followers that they encounter during their travels. Of course, as with most other things in Stone Shard, these upgrades will often come with hidden costs attached. As Varen's caravan grows in size, so too will the costs of maintaining it. And while camp followers can provide valuable and convenient services, they'll each come with their own randomized personality and background, which might end up causing unexpected complications. The player's actions will have a direct impact on each follower's mood, which in turn will influence how well they perform their duties. Happy followers may provide special quests or rewards, but unhappy followers may end up coming into conflict with the player or each other. If left unchecked, this will eventually trigger special events that will force the player to make difficult decisions, often resulting in long-term consequences for their caravan. From a visual standpoint, Stone Shard relies on heavily stylized, pixel-based art. While individual opinions of this style may vary, it's consistent and clearly defined, making it easy for the player to tell what they're looking at. 
While it can sometimes clash with the overwhelmingly grim nature of the game setting, many of the game's lush and colorful set pieces can actually be quite impressive. Similarly, even in its alpha state, the game already sports some rather impressive sound design. While the placeholder voice acting certainly leaves a lot to be desired, the gloomy and mysterious soundtrack more than makes up for it. The prologue already sports four complete tracks, including a main theme composed by Norahiko Habino, who's well known for his past work on games like Bayonetta and the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Now, I'll admit, I'm coming into this project a little late. I completely missed out on the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter, which ended on June 16th after raising a total of roughly 100,000 US dollars. This was not only enough to secure funding for the core game, but it also unlocked the first four stretch goals, adding a significant amount of additional content planned for the final game. Personally, I think the game looks quite promising already, especially for fans of the roguelike genre. While it does rehash a lot of familiar mechanics, it also includes a number of intriguing new systems to help it stand apart from other similar games. Of course, as usual, you don't actually have to take my word for it. The developers have released a free demo on Steam. Although this is just an early alpha build intended to serve as a proof of concept, it's surprisingly well put together, and it does a very good job of showcasing some of what the developers have in mind. While the original Kickstarter campaign has already ended, the developers are still accepting late pledges until July 17th. After that, they've set a rather ambitious development schedule for themselves, with closed alpha and beta builds being released before the end of the year, and a public release through Steam's Early Access program in early 2019. If Stone Shard looks like the kind of game that you might enjoy, then I encourage you to go check it out. You can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter, or by playing the free prologue that's currently available on Steam. As always, links are in the description.